started off life with uh, out of dad. Dad left. I do the joke. My act is that he left when I was born. I was like, something I said, wah, he's gone. It was like that a lot throughout life. It's like, what in the world was that? Why would, why would that happen to someone? These different circumstances that have happened with, you know, with the bullying from being short. I was, I had a di big discovery the other day. I, I, uh, life is really, really good for me developed from nothing from the dad leaving to, I thought the word evict meant move when I was younger because we used to get evicted. I lived in 13 different homes by the time I was in high school, lived with different people, different circumstances, chaos, mayhem, no base, no foundation, no, uh, faith. It was just this world of adjustment 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 and liver living in survival and how did i get through levity and laughter i will tell you a story that uh happened recently it confirmed affirmed that this is a path to be on for me and i hope for you add more humor to your life don't dismiss how important it is to have humor and laughter and joy in your life. They, the forces out there, program us to do the opposite. They don't want, they kind of, well, they get rid of the truth tellers. They have convinced us that language is so important that it must be canceled if you say the wrong words, if a comedian says the wrong words, and the wrong topics, whatever it is, it's the freedom of speech is not there when it comes to laughter and humor. They convince you that this is okay. It's okay to talk about vaginal warts and uh, erectile dysfunction, but if I said it as a joke on a national television show, they would take me off the air. This is the, this is the paradigm that has been developed now. Laughter is about freedom. Freedom of expression, freedom of your spirit, freedom to be who you truly are in your genuine energy flow, your genuine flow, not the flow of what they tell you to get in line. Here's your award. Here's your award. Here's your medal. Here's your grade for compliance, memorizing what they tell you to memorize. This beautiful, abundant life that is developed from nothing is because I had to keep saying no. I had to keep resisting those forces that want me in line and get into alignment with myself. This is what I've been moved to teach now is how it's not about teaching you comedy, although if you want to learn that as well, I'll teach you some, some pathways to comedy. Most of you know that I've, been, I've done very well from nothing. No coach, no mentor, no classes to say be a comedian. So the story I'm about to tell has to do with staying on this path that I believe was a gift. Despite all resistance, there's no one. No one that says, be a comedian. No one that says, hey, make people laugh. Think about it. It's never encouraged. It's discouraged. Will Smith slapped a comedian on, and they gave him a standing ovation. This tells you the level that people are when it comes to not taking laughter seriously, take acting seriously. All these things we've been programmed, but not laughter, not joy, not the, the mirth makers. So in fourth grade, I was, it was the first that I tried to fit into another school, another neighborhood, another home. And I did it by telling stories to the class. And I remember that feeling. It is such an incredible feeling, which is again, what I coach is to bring that feeling to everyone. Think about all the people that you hang with. It's always someone that you have this ethereal connection with this pleasure spot, this, this magnificence that takes place between the two of you. All my great memories of friends are when we're laughing. So I made this class laugh, and I was definitely not, I was ostracized, and I told you I was puny and fatherless and poor. These are all things in living in a pretty decently wealthy neighborhood. This isn't like a guy that's going to be accepted. You know, if you're wealthy, you're, you're going to go, hey, let's bring in the poor kid that doesn't have a shower and stinks because he doesn't shower. Or let's let's yeah you know, let's bring that into our tribe. No, people don't want that. And so the way I bonded with them, I made them laugh. I watched this whole connection take place as I'm telling a story actually about abuse. 
And the teacher was trying not to laugh. And the teacher didn't like that I was expressing myself. And she locked me in a closet for a whole day with my hands tied behind my back with blue yarn. I have such a very vivid memory of this. She said, you stay on this box. And I defiantly got off the box. I would look in the vent and see her thighs coming. And I jumped back up on the box. And life has been symbolically like that all throughout. Cancel culture is now here. FCC, parents, everybody says, don't you dare express yourself in a way that causes laughter. So here's the story I want to tell, and then we're going to get to what we're doing here, how I moved into teaching and coaching. More than performance, I've done it. Done probably trillions of laughs, maybe, if you totaled them up. It's wonderful, incredible. But now the mission is kind of switched into teaching how to alchemize, how to turn your how to turn things into, into joy, how to turn laughter into wonderful things, into gold. So I uh, was told to meet this guy for a while, a pastor, and I'm not a very religious guy. I'm very much into higher power and God and source and light, whatever we deem it to be. I love the book Conversations with, with God. It's one of the great books for me that really keeps me going with an understanding of the higher powers that created the creator, creativity. So I've always been open, but not really a church guy. So I went to this guy's church to speak for my friend, Frank, and he was there. And I went to the back of the room and he said, come into my office. And it's really, it was like a different connection I had with him. He said, um, I always wanted to meet you. You're very special to me. His daughter walks in. She says, he says, this is Craig Shoemaker. She goes, really, daddy? Is it really him? It's kind of strange. She said, he says, yes, it is, honey. And he goes on stage. He told a story about 25 years ago. He was studying to be a minister, and he had a mentor and a pastor mentor and best friend. It was his best friend. And he also had a fiance he met through Christianity, and she got pregnant. And he took her to his parents' house to introduce him and say, we're having a baby. She, they said, you will abort that baby. or We will never speak to you again. We will disown you. We are ashamed of you abort that child. He was distraught. And then he found out to top it all off. It wasn't even his child. It was his best friend's child. Let's imagine how you would feel. So betrayed. Parents, the fiance, life wasn't worth living for him. And he was suicidal. He, didn't want, he wanted to end his life. And he started to drive and he was, drove and he was about to drive off this cliff and a miracle occurred. He didn't say what it was. And then later that night, I went to Kenny Loggins, my old friend, and I was listening to him and at this beautiful concert. I was really feeling he was singing this song, Peace of Mind. A little peace, peace. And I was just so filled with light and love and levity and laughter, God, all of it. And I got a text from this pastor. He said, I didn't say this in front of the congregation. He wouldn't believe me. But the reason I didn't commit suicide is when I got in the car, someone had just given me a CD from this comedian named Craig Shoemaker. He said, I laughed so hard at this comic that I thought to myself, while wow, life is worth living, I started crying. And I said, this is so filled with joy. And I didn't make the left off of that cliff. And he said, you saved my life. And I am here for you forever. And uh, I was just filled with tears and gratitude. And I realized at that moment, it took me back to fourth grade. And I said, wow, if it was just to save one life, if it was just to tell someone that life is worth living, then it was worth all of that rejection. People are going to reject us. Wipe that smile off your face. Don't be silly. Or you're a fool. All of those messages that we have to take us away from our true self and our laughter and our authentic self and our joy. So I tell that story because I want to share how, how I get there with others. And I developed a coaching program. I speak on it. I combine it with lots of laughter. I give you the medicine while you're getting it. And by the way, it uplifts a room, it, you, better relationships. You're connected with people once you make them laugh. 
once you bring joy, you don't have to be a comedian. You can, I'll give you a few tips. These are free. One is, watch how this works, by the way. Think of your favorite comedy movies and share them with someone. I've done this exercise and it's a riot. We'll say, planes, trains, automobiles, and like five people in the room will go, Smile because they remember that movie is a funny movie for them too. You are making and creating a new energy and a new light and new levity into that space. And I believe that this will help so much with the divisiveness that's going on. Right now, what are we sharing? We're sharing what we're told from a news source that they choose, which keeps us in fear, keeps us in doubt, keeps us in worry keeps us compromised, our immune system compromised, we're compromised, our minds are compromised, everything's compromised, increase the stress, and then disease can slip in. And I must tell you, I am really a healthy guy for making the choice of to move away from the news. It's one of the things I also teach because it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion that they set up. My mother says, where do you get the news from? I guess it's only their news. They choose it because they choose it based on who's watching and they're advertisers. They don't choose it based on giving people a lift of spirit. They don't choose it to give people a solution. They don't pick the news to encourage, unify, none of it. And all you have to do is look at a 24-hour news cycle and watch who sponsors the news. It's all people that benefit from us being compromised. So here we are. I want to take this whole other world, the small world, and make it bigger of laughter and joy. Winning with humor. You will win every single time that you can bring levity and light and joy and happiness and a smile to someone's face, a grin, a giggle, a guffaw. That is what you can do easily. I teach something called guided laughitation, chuckle chatter. You don't need jokes to make a choice of laughing. Watch this. <laughs> I just laughed. I don't have a reason. My body now doesn't, it doesn't care. My body, mind, and spirit, they don't care. It doesn't care. Those three do not care that I'm faking the laugh. And it's not even fake. It's real. It becomes real anyway once you start doing it. It's like starting your engine. It takes a little while to warm it up, at least the old cars that I grew up with. It takes a little while to warm up the car. <laughs> so, yeah, you warm yourself up with laughter and humor and watch what happens so so then i talk about not only share the movie but share a scene so if i say planes trains and automobiles those aren't pillows what does it do to you you just smile if you saw the movie i bet you did or your favorite sitcom let us know what it is and why now you're this is the exchange you can have with people instead instead of saying the election was rigged. It wasn't rigged. It was, this guy's a fool. This guy's an idiot. Here's why. Here's what we found out about him. Oh, 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 oh. It's all this digging around and stuff, but you're not digging in you. You're not digging on you. You're making about someone else. Thinking you can change someone by regurgitating the crap that they give you. You know what you can give to people? You can give them light. And it's so easy. And I have all of these pathways to get there. This is the work that I've been doing lately. And this is an announcement now for 22 people. Would have been more if I, my technical issues weren't there. But it's just, I am amazed to watch and observe what happens when these shifts take place. These shifts are magnificent. It's truly tapping into our potentiality. We have such human potential, but we put it down by surrounding ourselves in this darkness. Surround dark friends, people that are negative. Just think about what they do to you, but think that you can be the one who is the positive one that lifts them up, that takes them out of this misery. Misery does love company, but so does joy. Joy, the expression of it. Think about what you can do with a little bit of coaching. I've got some ideas on how to coach you there. I'm going to give you some of them now. I have an acronym for laughter. And I also have an acronym for heels. 
I'm not going to tell you the heels. We'll save that for when you pay me. <laughs> so, I really do want to coach. Not want to coach. I am coaching. And it is just, I cannot believe how great the results are. I don't know if he's here, but my friend Matt, he actually retained me as a coach because he realizes the value of coaching. He came through, through another huge coach in real estate and he's in, he does, you know, speaking and I went and saw him and to hear people's feedback on saying this guy was a crashing bore. I self-admitted, sorry, Matt, you admitted it. And to watch the room just transform because of he just had a purpose of I'm now going to add to everything that I know. He knows everything about mortgages. Number one guy in Cal in uh, Florida. He knows all that. It's all in the head. What's he going to do though to get the vibration to change and have people absorb what absorb what's there mentally? It's to break down those walls through laughter and joy and humor. And sure enough, they wrote to him. They said, this is, the, this is the greatest you've ever done. I can't wait till the next one. Think about that. Any room that you're in, how you can transform that room. It could be a, a bad Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> a lot of people have those. You can be the shift in that dinner. You could have people arguing politically. What if you bring in something of you? And here's how to get there. Laughter is an acronym. L is for love. If you just list what you love, I have people do these inventories that I work with. I, I've, I have uh, quite a few clients now, and I just love working with them. To see their shift and their transformation is just, it just gives me such joy. And listen, I performed in front of literally 75,000 people at once. I did it twice in Florida. And this one-on-one -on -one or the coursework or the groups that we've had, the Enlightened Up group, it's so rewarding to watch and observe. So I'm trying to ignore what people are, are writing here. Some people, I think somebody said, oh, that, my God, that's horrible. That's awful. I've had a lot of awful things happen. A lot of tragedies have happened. I was kidnapped by a serial pedophile when I was 13. Another thing I came up with the other day in this group therapy that I entered is uh, I forgot about it. I put it away. But when I went to another school, yet another school, tried to fit in, tried to be loved by joining the football team, even though I was really, really tiny, tiny, tiny. And they beat me like a gang rape, like a coyote wilding to the point where they took my underwear and they just pulled it up until my ass was bleeding, tried to hang me from a locker, threw me around. And my underwear, every day, they would just destroy my underwear. I was so embarrassed. I wouldn't tell my mom. I had, like, strings left. I didn't have a dad, no one to protect me. They actually came to my house and in my house after me. There was no safety. And I had all these things, and listen, I tried suicide as well, and I actually overdosed and died. I say these things because I survived, and I'm here to teach you how I survived. How we can survive anything and we can forgive I say these things because they're not awful, but they were absolutely moments in my life where I got to learn and I got to shift. They cannot, they are not the warden of my prisoner. I have the key to release, and that is forgiveness. And we'll get to some of these keys. But when is L is for love? List what you love, create that vibration. It's amazing. If you just share what you love with people, watch the smile on their face. Because they see the passion in your voice. They see it in your energy. I love, what I love today. I just love to watch my, I have two younger children, four children total. But when I see the younger ones, when they sleep, you see the little faces. And just, it's just this pure innocence. Their eyes are closed. Wonder what they're dreaming. I love them so much. And that, if I share that with someone, someone else relates to that. When I go on stage, I share a lot about what I love. And the second is the A, I also share what I don't accept, what I have a hard time accepting. I have a lot of bits now about masks and things like that. It's a hard time to accept breathing my own carbon dioxide and some of the rules of the pandemic. Hard to accept. Makes for great comedy. 
Think about the things that you have a hard time accepting. People talking in movie theaters, big frustration for me. Did you relate to that one? Or are you a talker? If you are, I will throw a milk dud at you and I will wet it and chew it first. <laughs> so that's the A. The U is unique. What makes you unique? What makes me unique today? Oh, here's something unique. I'm, I dressed for you, but I also wore furry slippers. <laughs> so, oh, no, that comes under T for truth. Unique. Uh, my mom belly danced at my high school graduation party. Nobody else has that. Nobody else. If they did, their mom was not renamed Shahrazad. No. Okay. Makes me unique. Did that make you smile to hear that? Probably. Guy's mom, or you might have even known it already. His mom belly danced at his high school graduation party. Yeah. A lot of funny stories about it. Lots of uniqueness, which again leads to people getting to know me. Like they'll get to know you. They'll get to know this other side of you, not regurgitating Roger or Regina, <laughs> regurgitating Regina, where you're just telling people what you're learning with all your little sources, your news sources, or whatever it is, or your your parties or your religion regurgitate, regurgitate. No, you be you, what you love, what you have a hard time accepting, what makes you unique. And we'll work on that. Then the G is for gratitude. If you're not grateful to what you have, you're not grateful for these uniqueness and your, what you love. If you're not grateful for it. Life's not worth it. What's it worth anyway? You're just selfish and self-seeking. And who's into that? kind of take you away from the self-seeking and selfishness. Not a lot of people like a narcissist. So if you are one, you might want to sign up for a class with me because I think I want to get you out of that hole. <laughs> so, uh, H is for humility. List your rumbles, your stumbles, your fumbles, your crumbles. When I tell stories about being burnt for a touchdown to blow the shutout for our high school football team or my dating mistakes and divorces and things like that people relate to it they relate more to that than they do your successes is list your failures stop with the image conscious crap doesn't do you any good doesn't serve anything and t is for truth tell the truth tell the truth that you're wearing slippers during a important meeting <laughs> so uh so happy to be back on the road by the way doing comedy comedy chateau tomorrow night uh because i i Get to wear pants. I get to wear pants and nice shoes again. Uh, the T is for truth. Truth is always funny. People relate to it. They're in the audience going, oh, I felt that before. They want to feel that again. That's all that laughter and comedy really is. I'll break it all down for you. Work with me or have fun with me. We play games. We have a blast. Well, we're learning things that are scalable, sustainable in our lives forever. Uh, listen. If we lead with looks, a lot of people lead with looks and their sexuality and stuff like that. It all goes, trust me. Trust me, it all goes. But one thing that doesn't is how you make someone feel. They're always going to remember that no matter what you're teaching them. They always walk out going, wow, I felt great with that guy. I hope you feel a little good right now with me. I think the people here probably do. And the, the next is for ego. Ego is all about that image stuff. It's just a killer. How does it look? And I have somebody I'm dealing with right now that just can't tell the truth because so wrapped up in the image. And not telling the truth is a real damaging thing. So ego and R is for, it's all the rewords, reboot, rejoice, refresh, press the, re, press the reboot. I, I think we're in a spiritual rebooty call right now. Boy, we could really use something like this, a program like this. I'm here to reprogram some of these thoughts and ideas that we have that have led to misery. It, it's led to negativity and darkness and not even know how to get out of darkness. Sometimes where you get in these places that are really alone. Well, I'm having a course where we're together in this, we have a mission, we have a movement and we are going to take over the world or just this little world that we're in. We're going to take it over with joy and happiness and glee, grin, giggle, guffaw, have a blast. Why not? The R used to be for re rejuvenate, but people criticized. And the women said it sounds like vaginal rejuvenation. Well, listen, your vag can be rejuvenated here too. <laughs> did I just say that? The people that work for me are going, what did he just say? That's the point. 
It came out of me. It came out of my natural self. And that's what laughter is. We don't analyze and judge all the time. We let that stuff go. We let go of our ego. You do those things in that program. And I also have acronym for heels, which we'll get to another time. But that's a little, that's a little bit about what I'm doing, what I'm offering here. We're winning with humor. We will win. We will be victorious. We will be healthy mentally, physically, emotionally. We will be the ones who will be the leaders in that department because the other ones are going right down the cliff like lemmings. They're following these. They're just following something that has never worked in history. Never. When you go get on board with leaders like this that are just false leaders are all about the money they're all about greed i'm about your wellness your happiness that's all i'm about yeah of course i have to charge a little money and it's a little bit of money compared to what you get that's it anyway i'll teach you a laughitation another time hope you got something out of this i also have a chuckle chatter i don't know if she's here i have a, one of my favorite Favorite. I don't like the word client, but whatever you want to call it, somebody that I see and she knows who she is. But uh, I've observed an amazing transformation in her and others. And just that is such a gift to me. And I would say if I were to rank it with these awards and the community of the year and all that kind of stuff, oh, it ranks well, well above to have someone like that man to tell me that you saved my life and you can too someone's sick what do they want by their bedside they want they don't want your worry they don't want your doubt they don't want your fears they don't want your projections they want wellness and happiness they want to have a reason to live like my friend michael goldberg gave him three months to live and he entered into this whole realm of laughter being the healer and he lived 15 years with what the doctors told him you need reason to live. You want a joy. That's what life is. That's why that, that's why that pastor did not ride off that cliff. He said, oh, well, life's worth living. So that's my message today. I'm glad I finally was able to do this. And uh, please get in touch with me. Give me a little feedback. I get the feedback from audiences, obviously, and that's wonderful. But this is the kind of feedback. I'm looking for these divine connections, these true connections. It's like, here's what I heard. Let me know that. Um, hopefully, you'll be part of this movement. It's a course, but it's a movement. It really is. I want to shift the world. Hopefully, you'll spread the word about not only my comedy, you know, come see the comedy. And it's, I'm combining it with things that like mission statements and purpose filled agendas. And that's me today. <laughs>